Come in here. What I like about th this is the clay is really. Um, I want the clay to be kind of like. Um, this I'm playing as if it's almost like mortar. Just put a little bit of this down here like this. That's a six foot. I'm just kind of put this down on here as if I'm laying some brick. Nice and fast, easy. And you just build where you need to build. And I have, uh, usually I work with my butler on this. And my butler is the same height that I am, and so it's like we just sit down there and we just make things, and he goes with a he goes moves one way and then I go move another way. So there's um, there's no right or wrong. You just kind of let it buck. You get back on that horse and just let it buck. And then you want to make sure that this thing here is really stuck together. And I don't go back and lick it. I don't need to lick it. great about this is the technique's really dumb. It is really dumb. This, this technique is so dumb that a little kid could do this. In fact, what happened is I found a pot that Andrea made in sixth grade. And I just said, it was like about, it, it's in the basement. It was about, the pot was about this big. And I said, Tyler, let's make that pot again. <laughs> is Andrea your wife? Yes. Andrea's a, she's a really good potter. Oh. Yeah, you know her work. No, uh -uh. you got to show us. Yeah, show us. Yeah. Oh yeah, you'd love quite a bit. You'd love her John's work. work. Totally yeah, good. yeah, it's her work is like she's like a she's a fellow that uh, of the Americans. She's in the College of Fellows in the American Ceramic Society. I'm really she's really smart. John, what's the gallery that you're in in Colorado? Harvey Meadows. Harvey Meadows. Look up Harvey Meadows. We went there. So oh, did you? Yeah, I went to visit Anderson last summer when John was there. Yeah, because you'll see good examples of both of their work there. Right. Andreas shows there too. So, so this is just you're 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 moving something around. You're just using a little bit of mortar. You just and it's just mortar. It's just mortar. It's kind of. I'm using your mortar. I have a never ending Oh, you do? Yeah. And whatever you have is right. And you just leave that Does mortar this one sticking have out like that. In it? it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. What, huh? what did you just say? You put salt. What's the, the salt for? Super stick up Epsom salt. No. Oh, that. Oh, well, you oh. add it to the slip? No, you deflocculate it first. Yeah. And then you reflocculate using Epsom salt. 
okay? Okay. And then you deflocculate. I just and you reflocculate each time. Each time you deflocculate, you add a little bit of clay to get it really dense. Would you explain the, the flocculation process? What is deflocculation? Do you heat it? No. No. You so so flocculation will thin it, or deflocculation will thin it. So it makes it fluid. So it makes the water thick. Fluid. It's like casting, right? And then when you flocculate, it's it is deflocculated. It. And so it's sort of like like an easy way to think about it is deflocculation is like magnets. The clay particles are flat and they kind of float. Mm -hmm. And then flocculation, it sort of turns it into a house of cards. And then the way that I think about it is because it's reflocculated, the house of cards, the clay particles are standing up. So it gives it just a little bit of flex when it dries. So the slip tends to crack a little less. Deflocculation really has more clay in it. And flocculated, mm -hmm. but it has more water. In it. water. it looks like it has more water in it. Mm -hmm. And the stick-up slip, what you can do is you can, what you have it in this thing here is like you mix this thing up. I put some sodium silicate or Darvan in there, mm -hmm. mix it up. All of a sudden, the stirrer is like this. Then I add more dry clay to it oh, and mix it up. The stirrer is like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I add more deflocculate and I mix it up. The stirrer is like this. Then I add more flocculent, the stir is like this. And then, yeah, it's so like, I've just, in that liquid with the sodium silicate, I've just packed that thing there to be like a royal frosting, mm -hmm. as opposed to a buttercream. Yeah. That's okay. it, yeah. All right. Yeah. But you don't need to do that. Uh, I don't know. Just I just this is nice. What's nice about it is it's uh, it's a nice slurry. It's been beaten up really pretty good. Um, it's I, just, I don't need any of that stuff. I know what I have going on here. So it's, it's they did a version of that at Kohler for putting the rims on the toilets. Yeah. And they just put the the clay in. So they just take the slip and they would flock. They would then flocculate yeah. with Epsom salt. And so they have these barrels of it and they mix it up with a big mixer mm -hmm. and then they put it in pastry bags and then they take the toilet bowl and they just pastry bag it all and so this th and then they just take the rim and it's mm -hmm. that's, that's what yeah, yeah. and you want to build this to the point where you can build it if it if it gets too wet then stop let it let it dry up. And the other thing is, let's say you don't like that mortar. Use mm. use your clay as a as a. Mm. This is a really great rib. So it's like it's just nice and soft. It just like moves really easy. You you can just kind of like get that stuff right back on the thing, just kind of quick and easy. I like the mortar. Yeah, I kind of like that mortar. So those slabs are pretty hard then? They were cut yesterday? Cut leather hard? Bone no. dry? No. no. It's like leather. Cut moisture? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of moisture in them, yeah. So, yeah. so if you have like leftover clay, just get the quilting book out. You just you don't throw it away. Just like, say, um, what I usually do is I, I take my, uh, we have a little um, um, slab roller, for one of like the breads, and I, I have uh, one of the helpers fill it up with clay about this high on a four wheel cart with newspaper in between it. <laughs> Wrapped up in plastic. And it's just like it's having a ream of paper, and it's like and they bring the butler over, and we just like start using this stuff up as fast as we can, or bring Sar Sam Harvey in from Aspen at Harvey Meadow Gallery, and just says, Sam, we have all this like extra paper, just just come here and let's work. <laughs> and then you want to make sure the thing is is really pushed together as carefully as possible. Um, you, you use ever what you have. If like you have something and you just you don't know what it is, to just kind of like just 
I got some. Hey, yeah, keep on going. Just keep on building. Kind of like work your way out. Just, uh, just you know, might want to have another piece here. Just, uh, yeah, there could be a piece there. Um. Is, everything's a gamble. When do you know you're done? Um, when do I know I'm done? Hmm. You run out of clay or inspiration first? I, well, it, clay would be one way, but inspiration I think would be, it's just, I'm just kind of, uh, Kind of correcting things. Just it, is sometimes what Tyler would do is he'd put the big pieces on, and then I'd have to go kind of. I got all these like little pieces that I kind of say, well, well I'm not going to throw that away. This is a great way to use up uh, all your leftover clay. Just. I have a trowel that I really like. It just, uh, the trowel kind of like, you kind of clean something up really nice so it doesn't have all the same sort of mark to it. Serrated or pointy or? It's just a, I have a, a trowel that you use for putting mortar on. Mm -hmm. A pointing trowel? Yeah, for like you just slop down some mortar. I, I love it. And then I have the thing super sharpened. <laughs> So, it's super sharp and so it's like, it works like a knife. Small one, big one? It's this big. Okay. Yeah. You probably have one for... Well, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah, but you don't have to go, you don't have to run around in five minutes to get one. <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> okay. They're doing, a, did you hear about your video? <laughs> No. We're doing John, a video. Do Mike is not yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do. A, we're doing a video of you taking off. I'll get that in five minutes, and then it, when you come back, it's already here. <laughs> Sheepishly putting your yeah. thing over to the side. Well, okay. That's good. Yeah. Right. Did you like that one? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's pretty funny. Yeah, this is. I'm. This is how I made my mom and dad sarcophagus. Oh. It was just all pieces, and then, then I just glazed the bejeebas out of it. Do you have? A, can you show us a picture of that later? No, I don't have a picture you of that. Picture? Well, I have like the cool. big covered jars. Gooey duck was made that way. Gooey duck was was made this way too. So, I just. Such a great idea. Yeah. You would never make a scene like that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Shannon's invisible scenes. What's wrong? Is it? Nothing's wrong. No, it's awesome. Oh, if I make a mistake, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then I'll work harder on it. I like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk to us about the glazing? Glazing is like, um, what I, I use is, is all student glazes. I use a lot of student glazes. And then I put in about 8% mason stain in them mm -hmm. and change colors. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I get glazes that I like the way they feel and I make sure that I have different types of formulas so that I have a variety in, um, in, of materials. So I don't have a, I don't have a barium glaze, but I, I, at one time I had a barium glaze. I have a chino glaze, I have uh, um, 
a bone ash glaze that's really nice called Plum Dog Red. And uh, I have one uh, that is a, it's called Pond Scum, which has nickel silicate in it. It looks just like Pond Scum. Just what it is? Nickel silicate. Oh, okay. Then I have a, another glaze that has, uh, I put Chino that has manganese silicate in it. Manganese silicate won't bubble or boil. So uh, that's, that's pretty nice. And these are home what? 10. Do you ever use underglazes? I can use underglazes, yeah. I use underglazes, but I don't usually. I use just a lot of glazes. Is there a, a Kleenex? I need I'll have some in my purse. Uh, or a paper oh, napkin or something. Wait, it'll just be five minutes. Hold this neat. Huh? <laughs> you got him, Raina? You so when, when you do uh, plates or platters, uh -huh. are you uh, I tape everything. Are you using a jig for those or can you can you demonstrate a little bit of how you approach a platter? Yeah, I, I can I can build a theoretical platter, but I can't build one because I don't have a mold. Excuse right. me. <laughs> I'm basically, when I make a platter, I make a bump that's sort of like this, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's really, really big. And then what I do on that bump is I, um, I pour a layer of plaster over it that's really thin. And then I put burlap in it, and then I put a layer of plaster over it so the things are really big. So my, my plate molds, my plate molds are maybe about that thick and a little bit thicker on the edges. Um, I've learned from all my students who've been in the medical hospitals with uh, hernias not to make things. Not to make it too big, you mean? Too big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hernias aren't fun. That happened to you? How many times? Really? A few hundred. Not huh? hernias, so just twice. Really? Yeah. He's had so many of them, they have like a zipper that they just put yeah. in there. To... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Brad. Brad. All right, there's the, you, you just can't make things that are possible. You either need to make things that are easy to lift or impossible to lift. As soon as you, yeah. if you can lift it with people, then you do, but if you have to have the forklift, you have to have the forklift. Which one? Yeah. You just have to be, you just can't do that boy thing. They think they can go just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the thing I did in Taiwan, maybe that's the last thing for that. What? That show I had in Taiwan last summer. The, it was the two heads. Because some of those pieces were really uh huh. And you had to get one of the gallery, so we had to do it by hand. Oh really? Well, that's okay. So this just works like mortar. Did you snow sheet on the Yeah, did she ever ever use different color mortar from the clay? No, I don't. But that's an idea. That would be a good idea. Oh, I'm just thinking of your bricklaying well, analogy. Yeah. <laughs> you can use different color mortars and that'd be Sweet. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she didn't keep the yeah. plates. Yeah, really would. Uh, Punch up the build the mortar. The, the yeah. 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 Oh, they had all that with it. Yeah. Well, for some reason, he ended up having to build a front slant wall and then pulleys uh -huh. to get the pieces up there. It was, it was interesting. But I thought it's a nice piece, yeah. Oh, the thing that I learned from working with Vocus was um, how slow it took you to get off the ground. Hmm. You know, like how slow you said, John? How slow it took. Like your pots, you're you're up there all really kind of really fast. Vocus, he'd figure out, ooh, how do I get this thing off the ground? What yeah. what's there about? What's there about like almost like recentering? And I, this morning I went out to look at the baobab tree. It's like mm -hmm. uh, this root, the little root. It's like I'm going to be just a little root. I'm going to work down here on this ground thing. I'm, 
I take my time. I don't need to go up so fast. You know, it's like, uh, ooh, oh, oh, I'm to another level. Ooh, ooh, I'm to another level. You know, it's just, and Vocus would like, really like take that time and really kind of get something really good to happen with it. Ooh, now I can maybe, maybe it's like put something, oh no, I'm gonna open that thing up so the thing just, you see, yeah, it's just, I think that sometimes people make things too fast. So, uh, but when I'm with my butler, we go, we just, we just go right through the clay. It's wonderful. John, where are you staying here while you're here? Oh, I'm staying in a hotel. Which one? The Lincoln. Oh, Lincoln. Lincoln. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. yeah no I'm at the Lincoln Hotel. <laughs> well, that's a nice easy. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's it. That's weird. Did, did you work with Vocus when he was doing those large? I worked uh, with Vocus when he got an honorary doctorate at Alfred. And I only worked with him on one piece. And uh, I was supposed to go work with him when he was in Ohio when he died. And it just, I didn't, I just, uh, guy died right in a workshop. Oh, my. Huh? I didn't know that. Yeah, he died in, uh, in at John Baldessari's oh my. house. He died right there. He was, yeah, I just think, what a way to go. Just doing what you love. Do you know for the attendees? Doing what you love. No, yeah, I mean, not for him. Yeah. For <laughs> how old was he? Was he, what, in his 70s, wasn't he, John? Yeah. I don't know yeah. how old. He wasn't that old. 2002? Yeah, I don't remember. He's got a piece of the federal building here that is so clean and geometric. Uh huh. Uh, right. Totally different than his father. Is it bronze? Yeah. Yeah. Big bronze with a, a ball shape and then yeah, right. long bent rods and such. Yeah, but a lot of that stuff there really was almost like pottery shapes. Yeah. Yeah. Not a seam in sight. Not a piece. It's back when he was doing his bronze. Yeah. They stuck it in a place where no one sees it. Well, that's what I was thinking. You can't yeah. get in the federal building. It, well, it's outside. Oh, it is? It's, um, if you go down Punchbowl Street, and then the, the federal building is on your right, it's the last side, uh, perpendicular street before you hit okay. Nimitz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and I, I think it's a one-way street. And yeah, there it is. is just sort of tucked down the side of the building. With There is a, there is a small plaque, from, but, from and there's a, there's a Ed Turnbull piece of, uh, I mean, not Turnbull, uh, what was his name? Uh, that Ricky Brownlee. Ricky. There's a Brownlee piece across from it. John, oh. you remember those commercials in the late 60s where they blew up these cars and then they reversed the film oh, yeah. and it looked like the car was coming together? Oh, really? Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> yeah. That sounds you remember really that good. Sounds Life magazine had a whole yeah. article about it. Yeah. That's what your work reminds me of. That's good. Yeah. That's that's means yeah. you're paying attention. Yeah. Where did that fork go? What? The fork? It's underneath. Oh, it's in the pot. I think it's in the slip. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is just a really kind of fun way to to build. Just just keep on going. It's, all that mortar just kind of like moving up there. It's a great texture on that. And, just, and I don't, I don't need to come go back there and kind of like adjust that. Just kind of work with it a little bit. I got to go to Goodwill and get some silver forks. <laughs> you only need one. Well, <laughs> I have so many of these. It's ridiculous. Well, we got chopsticks at the house, so you know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't have any <laughs> yeah, this is so different than the way I work. Really? The the other way. It's it's so different oh. than the ewer shapes. That it's nice to have a, a messier way to kinda of like play with something. Mm -hmm. And just uh those uh those mortars 
mortar patches must uh, catch the glaze really nicely. They can do a pretty nice job, yeah. You just, you just, I just leave them alone, or if I want to, I want to put something on it, just. <coughs> you don't ever uh, smooth out the fabric texture. That's. I did. On that, I did on one of them with a with oh, this. Okay. Got the rib, yeah. And with the rib, so it's like, yeah, you could. Well, I mean, in general, though, your work. Mm, on mine, the when I use the the denim, no. Mm -hmm. But this heavier stuff, I just. I can kind of like, I can smooth it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever carve into it a little bit, put texture in? Yeah, I've done that on some, especially when they're really, really thick, it just kind of you know, just come over there. Hey, I ran out of all my clay. I know. There's some more over there. Want some pieces? Yeah, just. Oh, no. And I like this stuff to be kind of, uh, this one here is a little soft right now. The other one was a little bit. You got one a little drier? Is that one drier? Okay, just put them outside. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Great. Wow, your fork and they cut. Huh? <laughs> your fork cuts like a knife. Well, just use what you got. Yeah. So once you come to the point where you stop, do you leave it uncovered to dry or do you let it put it on the plastic or something for a while? Well, I probably put it under plastic. Or I put it, uh, I might put it under a sheet, depending on, depending on what the weather is. If it's, yeah. probably the worst thing I've ever had break pieces is sunshine. Yeah. yeah. You know, just a, a, a direct bout of sunshine just to crack a piece really fast. So depending on what the weather is, if the weather's kind of moist, I could leave it out. If the weather is kind of dry, then I'm going to have to probably go a little bit slower. The nice